Today, I'm gonna to show you my video to animation workflow. Remember that this is cutting edge technology. It is constantly evolving. It's getting better over time. There is still some flickering when you play back the frames, but for now, make it part of the style, make it artistic. And let me show you my specific workflow for the Sandy Alcantara video. And remember, life is truly a gift. Make it count. This is the original clip that I used for the Sandy Alcantara animation. And the first step is to cut them out or rotoscope them out from the background. You can use some of the AI tools that are available now, or you can use After Effects. You can use Rotobrush, you can use Mocha. I actually ended up using Rotobrush. So let's jump to my Rotocomp. And we'll make this bigger so you can check it out. And notice that the Roto is not perfect. The edges kind of move around, but it doesn't matter. Stable Diffusion can work with this. Generating a 1080p image in Stable Diffusion requires a very high-end GPU. What I'll do instead is scale this down. Now I recommend either 512 by 512, which is the native resolution for Stable Diffusion, or you can go a little higher, like 640 by 640. And that's what we'll do for this one. Let's go to the comp icon and we'll make it 640 by 640. Now on the frame rate, I made it 15. The original clip is 30. I want half of that, which is 15. If you're working with 24 frames, go ahead and make it 12. Most people are cutting the frame rate in half at the end of the workflow. The reason that I'm doing right now at the beginning is to give Sable Diffusion less frames to process, which means that it'll take less time to process as well. Okay, hit okay. And then we'll bring in our roto comp. We'll scale it down. We'll reposition it. The very last frame, hit N for November to set the out point of your work area. We need a background color. Hit Control Y, Command Y, and we'll make it comp size. Give it a green color. Hit OK. Move this layer to the bottom of the layer stack. Now this is important because once we process this image sequence through Stable Diffusion and we bring it back to After Effects, we want to key this out so we can add our own background. Okay, we're ready to render this. Hit Control M or Command M to send it to the render queue. And we're in the render queue right here. Click on it, go to JPEG, click on JPEG, go to Format Options, and make sure that you set it to maximum and quality of 10, hit OK, go to Output. And what we'll do is we'll create a new folder. We'll call it Image Sequence. Let's go inside and let's give it a name. We'll call it Sandy Input. And hit Save and then click Render. In Stable Diffusion, head over to the Image to Image tab and then make sure that you are using the Protogen 2.2 model. And let's drop in one of the images that we just rendered from our image sequence. What I'll do is I'll go to the first one and we'll open it. And then from here, we'll write our prompt, negative prompt, and we'll adjust the parameters and we'll continue to hit generate until we achieve a look that we like. Now, instead of going through this long process, which is a little experimental trial and error, what I'll do is I'll go to PNG info and then I'll load an image, this one, and this contains all the parameters already. So this is a look that I like and I'll send it to image to image. And you can see that the prompt here I don't know if the AI recognizes Sandy Alcantara, but definitely baseball player Miami Marlins with beard. And there are keywords, extremely detailed, trending on art station, trending on CG society. These are all keywords. We'll close this. And it also adjusted the parameters for us. And then once you find the look that you want, you need to lock that seed. Remember that click on this button, this recycle button to lock that seed. Now, let me give you a demonstration. We'll go back and we'll go back to the image sequence. And I'll drop in the first frame and I'll hit generate. I'll provide all these parameters for you so you can work off what I did. It may or may not work perfectly for your images, but hopefully it'll be a good starting point for you. Okay, let's take a look. 
and it's looking pretty good. It's not perfect. You can see that the logo for the cap, the M for Miami, it's off. Miami, the spelling is off. The logo for the Marlins is not there, but that's okay. It's looking really great. Look at the original one. This is really blurry. And from this image to generate this image, it's amazing. Pretty good. Now we'll use control net to fine tune the look. What we'll do is we'll scroll down to control net, click on the arrow. We'll drop in the same frame, which is the first one. And then I'll enable low VRAM. I'm going to enable control net. For the preprocessor for this example, I'm going to choose Canny and I'll use the Canny model. Now you can choose any other model that you want. Canny works really well. Another one that works great as well is depth. And remember, amigos, you can harness the benefit of multiple control net models. You can go to the second one, you can enable it, and you can choose depth. And we can adjust the influence. This is the weight. This is how much influence this candy model will give us. We'll leave it at one. You can play with the threshold. And for the width, let's make it 640. The height, I'll make it 640 because I want to match the output width and height as well. Make sure that it is enabled. And I'll hit generate. You'll notice that when you're using control net, the amount of time it takes to generate an image will be longer. Okay, let's take a look, but before we do, let's go to this image. And this is what the candy model produced for us. This is the silhouette or an outline of our image and it forces the AI to stick to this pose or composition. And let's go to what it generated way much better than the first one. You can see that using control net and using canny, it's making the logo much more consistent with the original, the M for Miami, Miami, at least you can see the I, the A, the M and the I, the logo for the Marlins as well. Not only will it help us stay closer to the reference image, but when you apply that across the board and you play it back as an animation, it'll be more consistent. It'll hopefully have less flickering as well. We're ready to generate all the images for our image sequence. What we need to do is go to batch. We'll go down to control net. We'll simply close this, make sure that it is enabled. And all we need to do is specify the input in the output directory. And I'll go to this folder. I'll copy this, I'll paste it in. And this will be my output folder. I'll paste it in. And then once you have that set up, simply hit generate. Now for this example, it was 36 frames and it took approximately 22 minutes to generate. There are several factors that determine the speed Obviously, number one is your GPU. A higher end GPU will generate faster. Number two is your output size and parameters such as the sampling steps. Back in After Effects, let's import that image sequence that Stable Diffusion just generated. Hit Control I or Command I, and let's go to the folder, go to the very first image, and for sequence options, make sure that you check this box and then hit import. Now let's play this back. And notice that it's playing really fast and that's because by default, After Effects makes every image sequence 30 frames per second. Remember that we changed it to 15, so let's change the frame rate. Go to this button down here, interpret footage, and where it says assume frame rate, let's make it 15, hit enter. And now let's play it back. And it's playing at the correct frame rate. Now from this point forward, what we can do is we can key him out and then get creative at our own background and other layers. What I'll do instead is I'll show you some of the plugins that I use to create that specific look for this Sandy Alcantara animation. Let's go to the first one. And what I'll do is I'll solo this layer and I'll show you some of the plugins. The first one is key light to remove 
the green, and then there is a little bit of a green spill. Then I used advanced spill suppressor to remove that. And then I use refine hard mat to clean up the edges. I made a copy of this one. And then what I did is I added a fill to give it a color and a fast box blur. And then I moved it over to the right and I repeated the process for the blue one. This one, I moved it to the left and it creates this cool kind of glow outline for him. And then finally for the background, that's nothing other than Universe Red Giant Texturized Motion. Use their abstract. They have a couple of different options. For example, marker, that's pretty cool as well. Gives it a completely different look. Now the second one is simply a copy of the first one. I just simply added some text and let's go over the text. And the first one is the text in an outline. We have an outline and I added Deep Glow, which is a really great plugin to get awesome glow. Now you can use also Video Copilot Saber if you want, that is free. This is obviously a paid plugin, but it is plug and play and it looks really nice. Now for this one, it is using, let's go to this one. It is using Shadow Studio 2. It's another great plugin, it helps you achieve really nice shadows. And the last version, again, is simply a copy of the first one. The only difference is I added halftone. This is from Boris FX Sapphire Collection. It gives you this cool halftone look, this vintage kind of newspaper look. And I added Prism Lens, which is one of their newest plugins in their Sapphire Collection. And that is it, amigos. Hopefully this gives you ideas of what you can do for your very own video to animation AI art.